Its history in South Africa is tragic because mostly by neglect more than anything else. It was hunted out, it was driven out to make way for grazing, really. It wasn't until the last one had died and they sent back to South Africa for another live quokka. That was pretty much the first time everyone really realised that there were no quokkas left at all. It was a very distinctly different colour. It was very brown, rather stripeless on the rear of the animal, and of course for many years was considered to be the fourth zebra, a completely different species of zebra. Eventually, it was proved in the mid-70s from pioneering DNA techniques that without any doubt at all, it's not a separate species, and therefore, you could rebreed the quokka. It can be done. Technically, it can be done. All plain zebra, including the quokka, are very, very closely related. The only distinguishable difference from a DNA perspective is the phenotype. We have plain zebra, plain zebra have characteristics. We may be able to recapture those characteristics and concentrate them into a relict quokka population. The plan is to get a herd which is breeding true, fixed characteristics, look like water, and put them in somewhere like the Karoo National Park, the Tunkwa Karoo National Park, or indeed some publicly available space. And you would go there and say, wow, this is what this faunal assemblage used to look like. These were the zebras that were here. It's about righting the wrong of the disappearance of the quarter. This animal was simply wasted, and that complacency cannot be allowed to go forward. This is an absolute beacon to show people that it shouldn't have happened in the first place, and that you can unwind at least some of the damage. It's not as important as making sure that our oceans don't warm. It's not as important as making sure that our megafauna is not stripped out of Africa by people for medicines that don't work. But it is about trying hard and showing people that you mustn't just let things go.